الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله Dear viewers of Madani Channel Welcome once again to our silsila Fazani Sayyida Fatima radiyallahu ta'ala anha In this silsila we look into the blessed life and the blessed biography of Sayyida Fatima radiyallahu ta'ala anha the dearest and most beloved daughter, the best of all creation, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wasallam. And by looking at different aspects of her blessed life, we see what pearls of wisdom there are and what lessons there are for us to practically implement in our lives. In previous episodes, we've discussed various topics such as the greatness and the status of Sayyidah Fatima radiallahu anha, her miraculous wonders, her saintly miracles, her karamat. We've also discussed the love that she had for the beloved Prophet وسلم, and her passion and enthusiasm for the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Insha'Allah Azawajal, in today's episode, we'll be looking at the grief and sorrow that Sayyidah Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha experienced when the beloved Prophet وسلم, veiled himself from this world. A very emotional topic in which we will learn many things about this incident that happened in the history of Islam when the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa left this world and the Sahaba Kiram Ali Muridwan was separated from him Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. Before continuing with our topic, I'll share with you a virtue and blessing of reciting Durud Sharif, reciting peace and blessings upon our beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. It's reported that the beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam said, when Thursday comes, Allah Azza wa Jal sends angels who have papers made of silver and pens made of gold. These angels write the names of the people who recite Durud Sharif, Salawat, peace and blessings in abundance on the day of Thursday and the night before Friday. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa baraka wa sallam. Dear viewers of Madani Channel, as we've discussed in previous episodes, the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam pre-warned Sayyida Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha about him veiling himself from this world sometime before this incident happened. The beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam whispered into her ear. She began to cry. Then the beloved Prophet alayhi wa sallam whispered again into her ear and now she began to smile. And Sayyida Aisha radiallahu anha requested Sayyida Fatima radiallahu anha to reveal the reason why she first of all cried and then smiled. Sayyidah Fatima radiallahu anha declined to reveal the secret of the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa initially. Later on, after some time, Sayyidah Fatima radiallahu anha informed and said that the first time the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa whispered in my ear, he informed me that he would soon be veiling himself from this world and soon they would be separated. Then the next time the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa saw her after seeing her crying and weeping, the beloved Prophet ﷺ informed her that, Oh my beloved daughter, from amongst my family members, you will be the first one to join me. And this made her smile and made her happy. The scholars, they say that the beloved Prophet ﷺ continued to grant blessings to that illness for 18 days. During this time, the Sahabi Kiram Ali Muridwan, they would visit. It's reported that on a Monday, the illness intensified. And Allah Azza wa ordered Malakul Maut, the angel of death, Present yourself in the court of my beloved sallallahu alayhi wa and go in a beautiful form and be gentle with his blessed soul. So the angel of death came to the door of the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in the form of a Bedouin, came to the door and asked permission to enter. The reply was given, O servant of Allah, may Allah reward you for coming. The beloved sallallahu alayhi wa is not well. He asked again for permission to enter the second time and the third time. Then the beloved Prophet ﷺ said, Do you know who this is? This is the one who finishes all pleasures. The one who causes separation. The one who makes women widows. The one who makes children orphans. The one who makes houses empty. 
and the one who makes graveyards full. This is Malakul Maut. This is the angel of death. O oh, angel of death, enter. May Allah Azza wa have mercy upon you. The angel of death entered the blessed home of the beloved Prophet Sallallahu The beloved Sallallahu asked him, Have you just come to visit or have you come to take my soul? The angel of death replied and said, I have come to visit, but I have also been ordered to take your blessed soul. Allah Azza wa told me not to enter without permission and not to take out your soul without permission. If you grant permission, then fine, otherwise I will return. The beloved Prophet ﷺ said, O oh, angel of death, where is my beloved Jibreel ﷺ? The reply was given, he is in the first heaven. Now immediately, Sayyidina Jibreel ﷺ came into the court of the beloved Prophet ﷺ. The beloved ﷺ said, O oh, Jibreel, now it's time for me to leave this world. Tell me, what is in store for me from the court of Allah Azza wa Jal? Jibreel said, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there are rows of angels waiting with folded hands, with emanating fragrance, with prayers of peace, ready to welcome your blessed soul. The beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then said, Alhamdulillah, give me more glad tidings. Jibreel then said, the doors of Jannah have been opened, the rivers of Jannah are flowing, its trees are filled with fruit. The maidens of paradise have been decorated, ready to welcome your blessed soul. The best of all creation, sallallahu alayhi wa said, Alhamdulillah, give me more glad tidings, O Jibreel. Jibreel alayhi salam then said, you are the first who will intercede. And on the day of judgment, your intercession will be the first to be accepted. Then the beloved Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam again said, Alhamdulillah. Then Jibreel alayhi salam said, Allah azza wa has said, O oh my beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I have made jannat, I have made paradise haram for all anbiya and all other nations, all ummas, until you and your ummah have entered paradise. Subhanallah. As Sayyidi Allah Hazrat, Imam Ahli Sunnat, Imam Ishku Muhabbat, Mujaddid Deen Millat, Asha Imam Ahmad Raza Khan, Alihi Rahmatu Rahman. He says in Hadaki Bakshish, Jai na jab tak ghulam, khuldah sabbar haram, Jai na jab tak ghulam, khuldah sabbar haram, milk to hai aapka, tum pe karo rund rood. Then the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, O Jibreel, my heart is now pleased. O Malakul Maut, do what you have been ordered to do. This was that moment when mountains of grief were found in the city of Medina. The greatest calamity, the greatest difficulty ever faced by the Sahaba Kiram alayhi muridwan being separated from the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And from amongst the Sahaba Kiram and the family of the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Sayyidatuna Fatima to Zahra radiallahu ta'ala anha was overcome with grief. She was overcome with sorrow at the separation from her beloved father sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To such an extent, it's reported that she even stopped smiling. Sayyida Fatima radiallahu anha, when the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam veiled himself from this world, she, she, sto she stopped smiling. She never smiled again. And she adopted solitude. She would stay alone and not mix with people anymore. She said, Oh Father, you have accepted the call of your Lord. Now Jibreel will never come down again. Hakim al Ummah, Mufti Ahmad Yar Khan Naimi, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala, he says, Sayyida Fatima, radiallahu anha, she didn't lament or scream. She expressed her emotions at being separated from her beloved father, sallallahu alayhi wa And she shed tears. She wept. But she was not impatient. She did not lament. She did not scream. She was not impatient. And separation from the beloved Prophet Sallallahu experiencing this and crying upon this occasion is an act of ibadah, an act of reward. Mufti Sab, Rahimahullah, he further commentates and says that she was not impatient. Impatience would have been to scream, to object at Allah decision, to rip out hair or clothing. But Sayyida Fatima radiallahu anha remained pure from these impermissible actions. And this is a wonderful example for us. When somebody close to us passes away, we should remember the example of Sayyida Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha. We should remember her patience at losing the best of all creation, the purpose of all creation, her beloved father sallallahu alayhi wa It is permissible to shed tears. It is permissible to praise the one who has passed away. 
but hitting oneself, ripping out hair, making false praise, all of these things are haram. To the extent that in one hadith, the beloved Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has sent la'na, has made, has mentioned that curse is upon such a woman who either laments, screams out loud when somebody has died. And the curse of Allah Azza wa Jal is also upon the one who listens to this. And severe punishments in the hereafter have been mentioned for such people. Mufti Sahib Rahimahullah also mentions that there are five people in the history of mankind who cried the most. Number one, Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salam at the separation from Jannah when he was repenting in the court of Allah Azza wa Number two, Sayyiduna Nuh alayhi salam out of fear of Allah Azza wa Number three, Sayyidina Yahya alayhi salam, again in the fear of Allah Azza Number four, Sayyidatuna Fatima to Zahra radiallahu ta'ala anha, upon this occasion of being separated from her beloved father sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And number five, Sayyiduna Imam Zainul Abidin radiallahu an, after the battle of Karbala, when he would remember the difficulties and the martyrdom that was faced by his respected father, Sayyiduna Imam Hussein radiallahu an. It's reported, that upon the passing of the beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sayyidatuna Fatima radiallahu anha expressed her grief and sorrow, sorrow in the following couplets of poetry. She said, Mada ala man shamma turbata ahmadi an la yashumma mada zamani ghawaliya She said, What blame is there upon the one who smells the fragrance of the dust of the blessed resting place of the beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam such that this person, upon smelling the dust of the resting place of the beloved Prophet does not need to smell even the most expensive perfumes in the entire world anymore. She then said, Subbat alayya masaibun law annaha subbat ala al-ayyami sidna layaliya She said, such calamities and such disasters have fallen on top of me that if such calamities and such disasters were to fall upon the days, then those days would no longer remain days, but those days would become nights. Allahu Akbar. Such grief and such sorrow that she mentioned. My dear brothers in Islam, my viewers of Madani channel, it's very important here for us to remember that when the Prophets والسلام, veil themselves from this world, it is not like the death of normal people. In fact, the Prophets والسلام, only taste death for one moment. So the promise of Allah Azawajal is fulfilled. As Allah Azawajal has said in the Quran, Kullu nafsin maut. Every living being must taste death. For the fulfillment of this promise, the Anbiya والسلام, also taste death. But after that one moment, after that exact moment, they are restored back to a physical and bodily life. Our beloved Nabi وسلم, has mentioned in a beautiful hadith, an authentic hadith found in the collections of Siha Sitta. He وسلم, is reported to have said, Inna Allaha harrama ala al-ardi an ta'kula ajsad al-anbiya the beloved Prophet said, Indeed, Allah has made it haram, has made it forbidden for the earth to decay and decompose the blessed bodies of the Anbiya Ikram. For indeed, the Prophet of Allah, the messengers of Allah are alive and they are given sustenance in their graves. This is why Sayyidi Allah Hazrat, Imam Ahl Sunnah, Radiallahu anhu, expressing the aqidah which we learn from this beautiful hadith. He says, Tu zinda hai wallah, tu zinda hai wallah, meri chashme alam se chup jane wale. And he also says, in another couplet, Anbiya ko bhi ajal aani hai, magar aisi ki faqat aani hai, phir usi aan ke baad unki hayat, misle sabiq wohi jismani hai. He says, that the anbiya, anbiya'i kiram, alayhi musulatu salam, must also taste death, but only for a moment. And after that moment, they are restored back to their bodily and physical lives. Subhanallah. So now, we have firmed up our aqidah and our belief about the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa and all of the anbiya kiram alayhi wa sallam being alive. The state of their grief and sorrow, it's reported that Sayyidina Bilal radiallahu an, a great ashki rasul, when the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa departed from this world, Sayyidina Bilal radiallahu an couldn't bear to stay in the city of Medina. So much sorrow and grief was afflicting him that he went away to Sham, he went to Syria. It's reported that after one year, 
Sayyidina Bilal radiallahu anhu saw a dream. And the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa came into his dream and said, O oh Bilal, why don't you visit me anymore? O oh Bilal, why have you stopped meeting me? Does your heart not desire to meet me anymore? Sayyidina Bilal radiallahu anhu, in great ashik rasul, he got up straight away in the middle of the night, said, Labbaik ya Sayyidi, Labbaik, I am here, I am ready. He sat on his camel and he began traveling. He journeyed day and night until he entered the beautiful city of Al Madinatul Munawwara. He went straight to the masjid, Al Masjid al Nabawi Sharif, looking for the beloved Prophet. The beloved Prophet had come into his dream and asked him to come and meet with the beloved Prophet. Bilal was searching everywhere in the masjid, in the chambers, and finally he went to the blessed resting place, the blessed Rawda, the blessed grave of the beloved Prophet and said, Ya Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you called me to meet you. Your ghulam, your servant, has come all the way from Syria. Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you have veiled yourself from us. We cannot see you. Having said this, Sayyidina Bilal radiallahu anh, fell unconscious. News spread in Medina that the Mu'azzin, Mu'azzin Rasul, the Mu'azzin of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sayyiduna Bilal radiallahu anh, has returned from Syria to the blessed land of Medina. They asked Sayyidina Bilal, O oh Bilal, why don't you give the azan that you used to give in the time of the beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? O Bilal, why don't you remind us of that time? Why don't you give that azan, that azan that we haven't heard for so long? Sayyidina Bilal radiallahu anh, said, no. I will not be able to give the azan now. Before when I used to give the azan, I would say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. When I would reach the part of the azan, when I would, when I would recite, Ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah I would look at the place where the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was sitting. Now, when I reach this point, when I reach this maqam in the azan, who will I look at? Please forgive me. I can't do it anymore. I can't give the azan. Some of the sahaba kiram and himridwan, they then had an idea. They said, ask Hassanain Karimain. Ask Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein radiallahu anhuma. Ask them to request Sayyidina Bilal radiallahu anh to give the azan that he used to give in the time of the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Bilal radiallahu anh will never refuse them. He is a lover of the family of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa So they were requested and they came. Imam Hussein radiallahu anh held the hand of Bilal radiallahu anh and requested him and said, O oh Bilal radiallahu anh, give the azan, the same azan that you used to give at the time of our beloved grandfather sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sayyidina Bilal radiallahu anh picked him up and said, you are the blessed grandson of the Prophet ﷺ. I will do whatever you say. I can't bear to see you sad. Tell me whatever you want and take me wherever you want. So it's reported. Sayyidina Bilal radiallahu anh. Now, after all of these months, after the passing of the Prophet ﷺ now gave azan. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. When people heard the voice of Sayyidina Bilal radiallahu anh giving azan, the voice of Sayyidina Bilal echoing in the streets of Medina to Munawwara. The people start running out of their houses from the markets and the streets and they all gathered in the masjid. The same atmosphere, the same atmosphere from the blessed time of the Prophet ﷺ was created. Then when Sayyidina Bilal continued the azan and he reached Ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah the people began to weep. The people began to cry and they said Bilal is here. But where is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Sayyidina Bilal radiallahu anh recited, Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. And he looked at the place that he used to look at before. But he didn't see the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam there. <laughs> he fell unconscious. It's reported that he regained consciousness after a long while. He continued weeping. And in the state of sorrow and grief, he went back and returned to the city of Sham. He went back to the land of Syria. It's reported when the time, the final moments of the life of Sayyidina Bilal radiallahu anhu came. He was about to leave this world. His wife said, Wa huzna, O oh grief, O oh sorrow, my husband Bilal radiallahu anhu is about to pass away. But Sayyidina Bilal radiallahu anhu was not sad. Now he was not grieving. Now he was not sorrowful. He said, Wa taraba, Wa taraba, O oh joy, O oh happiness. Ghadan alqal ahibba Muhammadan wa sahba. 
Now I will leave this world, I am happy because tomorrow I will meet with the beloved ones. I will meet with the beloved Prophet and his beloved companions. Dear viewers of Madani Channel, in today's Silsila, we have learned about the incident, the background to the beloved Prophet veiling himself from this world and how the Sahaba Kiram was struck with grief and sorrow and in particular the grief and sorrow that afflicted Sayyidatuna Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha and the rest of the Sahaba. Dear views of Madani Channel, we learn that the Sahaba Ikram were true lovers of the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And this is why they were strong and this is why their power was spread across the world and they were successful in every field because they knew that if they have love for the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Allah azza wa jal will make them successful in this world and the hereafter. As Sayyidi Allah Hazrat radiallahu anhu says, Jaan hai ishki Mustafa, roz fuzu kare khuda. Jaan hai ishki Mustafa, roz fuzu kare khuda. Jisko ho dard ka maza, naze dawa uthaye kyun. Life is the love of Mustafa. May it increase forevermore. He who enjoys the pain of love, why would he look for any cure? Dear viewers of Madin Channel, it's important for us now to create this love in our hearts for the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa May Allah azza wa jal enlighten our hearts with true love for his beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ameen. Bijahin Nabi al-Ameen. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallu ala al-Habib. Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa baraka wa sallam. Blessings of Sayyidah Fatima Zahra.